You're just too good to be true. Can't take my eyes off you. You'll be like heaven to the touch. I want to hold you so much. At last, I'm the Just too good to be true. Can't take my eyes off of you. Pardon the way that I stare. There's nothing else to compare. The sight of you leaves me weak. There are no words left to speak. But if you feel like I feel, please let me. Just too good to be true. Can't take my eyes off of you. I have the oil of spike lavender. Put a few drops on the palette. I'm going to take some Indian yellow and some burnt sienna. And that's about the consistency that I like to use. Got a nice amount sitting there. I'm going to seal up this bottle for a moment. And now I'm going to spread this on the canvas. The ink drawing that I did is still visible underneath this imprimatur layer. And I can use some of this spiked lavender. Uh, this is a clean brush, but just to show you, if I want to take something away, just a little spike lavender and a rag, and I can take that away. So I'm going to pull all of my lit areas away. Like this is going to be the sky up here. I can use just a dry rag, or if I really want to take something away and make it white, I can use some of this spike lavender oil with the rag and pull things away to make them very brilliant and very white. I can also take some of the tone that I have, the burnt sienna and Indian yellow oil paint, and I can add that on here to create some more darks. So at this point, I can pull things away and make them lighter. I can add more paint to make things darker. And I can also leave anything that is middle value just as the tone of the imprimatura. Ambition or worldly acclaim. 
I could keep working on this painting. I could keep pulling those lights away. As I work further and further, I just started to grab, this is mainly just burnt sienna paint, and I would just start really softly scumbling some of those darks in to, to make them even darker. And now this spike lavender is going to dry everything out overnight. Last test of the night before the battery dies. Can I still? Yep. So if I use the oil of spike lavender, so even though I've been working for two hours on this painting, I can still pull the lights away. So this is the imprimatura that I came to in the last painting session. You can see the ink underpainting. I could have gone a lot darker with that. Necessarily paint in a traditional manner where imprimatura is always necessary. That would be indirect painting. I'm not going to use any glazing or scumbling as I complete this painting. I'm just going to go in and paint like I normally do. I'm going to find a shape. I'm going to mix up the value and color that is that shape. And I'm going to hopefully put that shape in the right spot. This is a very warm and inviting place to start. And I think that that imprimatura underpainting is going to lend itself to giving me some glow in the final product. And I know the values that I'm going to be using for the different shapes on the painting because I have my little value sketch that I made at the start. So these two are going to work together to inform what I'm going to do next.
Here's the second session painting. This is how far I got on the second day. Today my job is to take stock of what's on the canvas, refine anything, and bring some resolve to this painting. So here's a shot of the painting as we finish up. I can also put a photo of the painting on the screen. This is my Imprimatura demo. I didn't approach it like a traditional Imprimatura because I didn't glaze and scumble once I had the underpainting done. But instead, I made my own version of an Imprimatura. And the whole time I used the Art Treehouse supplies. So thanks so much for sticking with me through this video process. We'll do this again soon. I'll give you my heart